Today we are going to try to understand the impact of territorial expansion on Native American tribes people. You will also learn more about the Watauga settlement and the government they formed, a government independent of Britain. They call their plan for government the Watauga Compact. You see, at first, white settlers had no legal right to be west of the Appalachian Mountains. At least not in the opinion of some Native Americans and King George III. The settlers kept peace with the Cherokee Nation by going to Choda. The most important Cherokee village in the area. Who is telling this story? You are. I was merely pointing out that Choda was an important Cherokee village. I would know, since I am a Cherokee girl myself. Well, you have got a point there, darling. Please to continue. We were talking about how the white settlers kept peace with the Cherokee Nation. So, those that met worked out a deal. The white settlers gave the Cherokee people goods worth, oh, about a thousand dollars. In exchange for permission to live on all the country on the waters of the Watauga River for ten years. Yup. All the country on the waters of the Watauga River. Those are the exact words they used in the agreement. These settlers did this on their own without permission of the government of Great Britain and in direct defiance of King George's proclamation of 1763. Dang it, little darling. There you go using engine words again. What is defiance? What is that in English? My dear country boy. Defiance is one of your English words. It means to disobey, to go directly against a rule or the wishes of someone in authority. I knew that. I was just testing you. It was not long before there were enough white settlers that they needed some sort of government. They needed some sort of law and order. So, in 1772 the leaders of several settlements in the Watauga River Basin signed an agreement known as the Watauga Compact. Although no copies of this agreement remain today, some historians believe it to be the first attempt by colonists anywhere to form a government independent of Great Britain. Shall I explain what the Watauga Compact did? Yup. I am tuckered out from talking. I wish someone would invent Coca-Cola so I could have a nice cool drink. Coke. Yeah. Okay. The Watauga Compact did several things. One was to create a court to deal with lawbreakers. The court also allowed settlers to record legal documents such as wills and property deeds. What is a... Ooh, will? I will specify what to do with your stuff. After you die. I was going to take it with me. To heaven. You are not allowed to do that. Dang. Watch your language. Once settlers got to Tennessee, their relationships with the Native Americans. Those are the people I just call Indians. The relationships were good at times and bad at times. Since Great Britain did not get along with France. And since the Cherokee tribe did not always get along with the Creek and Chickasaw tribes, things could get complicated. The settlers were land hungry, and they knew that the country they were moving into was big and fertile. In 1775, a man named Richard Henderson called a meeting of some of the Cherokee leaders and offered to purchase for them an enormous. Enormous means very, very large. Thank you, little Indian girl. Richard Henderson offered to buy a very, very large piece of land for lots of European-made merchandise. My people would get mirrors so we could see ourselves while we get dressed for work. Clothes made of actual cloth and shiny rocks they called jewelry. Ooh, pretty. Do you know what it is like wearing animal skins every day of your life? We call that leather. Leather's cool. Hmm. Okay. So Henderson proposed this deal. Well, most of the Cherokee leaders thought this was a pretty good idea. After all, it was not land on which they lived. They just used this land most of Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky for hunting. But they had no idea how big this settlement might one day become. Among the Cherokee leaders in favor of the deal was Little Carpenter. This man had been to England. He had saw... Seen. What? He had seen. Little Carpenter had seen. What had he seen? He had seen cities. He had seen ships. Big ones. 
He had seen factories and a whole lot of other parts of European culture. Right, you are Mr. Bean. But, and this is a big but, one of the Cherokee men did not like the idea. This man was Little Carpenter's son dragging canoe. He made a dramatic speech against the land sale. He said the land would become a dark and bloody ground for Europeans to settle. He then stormed away from the meeting along with many of his followers. But the majority ruled. And the land deal was signed. They had met at Sycamore Shoals along the Watauga River. The land deal became known as the Transylvania Purchase. Well, sir. Right away, Henderson sent people with the explorer's territory. One of the first was Daniel Boone. What a hunk. Oh, brother. Daniel Boone was the man. Boone tried to start a settlement at a place now known. As Boonesboro in Kentucky. That early attempt at a settlement failed because Boonesboro was attacked again and again by Shawnee warriors. A couple of years later, Henderson sent about 200 people including men, women, and children in two groups across the wilderness. What you might call the frontier. To settle a place on the Cumberland River that was unknown as French Lick. It was called French Lick because a French trader and long hunter lived in a cave there for some time. And the Lick part of the name came about because of a salt lick there that attracted animals. A salt lick is a place where wild animals come to lick a rock that has salt in it. Most of the men came first through the Cumberland Gap under the leadership of James Robertson. They walked and took horses. Along with them came cows and other domesticated animals. Their trip went pretty smoothly. Meanwhile, the women, children, and the rest of the men headed for French Lake by boat. Flat boat. Their leader was Colonel John Donaldson. Aboard. His flagship, the Adventure, Colonel Donaldson led families on. An historic river voyage to the first permanent settlement on the Cumberland. Colonel Donaldson and his wife Rachel Stockley had 11 children. Their seven sons and four daughters were all born in Virginia, and all traveled from Watauga settlements in East Tennessee to the New Cumberland Settlement. In fact, all of their children, except for one son who went overland with James Robertson, were on the historic river voyage, including 12-year-old Rachel. The daughter Rachel would one day marry a man who became a president of the United States. Sadly, 33 of the people who began this river voyage died along the way. At one point they were ambushed by war parties led by... By none other than Dragon Canoe. His followers were now known as Chickamaugans, and they attacked the settlers many times, not just once, as they came down the river. Eventually, French Link became known as Fort Nashboro. Then finally Nashville. We have to go now. But there is a whole lot more to learn about the early settlement of Tennessee in your textbook, starting on page 184. And do not forget to look at the lesson on life in early Tennessee from pages 192 to 195. There are some biographies on pages 196 and 197, too. Then there's the little booklet. Bloody ground, our ground. See the story starting on page 13. Bye. Bye for now. I need to look at myself in my new mirror. And I need to find somebody to invent coke.